Hello everyone, greetings and welcome to this new video. Today I'm going to discuss about something really, really interesting. Something that I think that some of you might have already on your data center. And I'm talking about the, the QNAP Q objects. Q, U objects? Uh, Q objects? I, I, I will call it Q objects. Uh, this technology uh, that you have in every single QNAP, uh, it will enable a quick S3 compatible uh, server, as well like an OpenStack S3 server inside your QNAP within a few clicks. So that's absolutely powerful and pretty much commodity in the case that of course you have already the, the, the QNAP. And the most important thing is that during the video today, we're going to see how to integrate it with Beam Backup and Replication to have an, uh, an offload copy um, or even just use it as use it in as an archive as well for Beam Backup and Replication. This is 100% supported by Beam. Um, it's a KB around around this uh, specific topic. I think the KB, if you bear with me one sec, I can tell you uh, the, the KB is KB number 4177. And that uh, there you can see the whole HCCL uh, that it has been tested by Beam and so on. It is important for you to understand that the testing that Beam has been uh, performed with the QNAP Q objects, it has been done with SSD uh, and plus, so that is the most important thing first, and as well with a more than recent um, uh, model of QNAP, and as well they have been used um, as well uh, 10 gig, or they recommend uh, they recommend the 10 gig, or at least the 2.5 uh, gigabit Ethernet ports. So once again, Beam has tested this with a high spec QNAP. So in the case that you have more commodity QNAP, like one of these small boxes or something, it will still work, um, but probably be in the case that something happens or is not performing as expected, I think that Vim will point us to the KB saying specifically, look, um, these are the specs that we tested and it performs um, very well. Just bear that in mind. Once again, you can just give it a try and, and so on. So as I've said, on, on this video, we are going to see how to enable uh, the QNAP Q objects and how to integrate it with the impact and replication. So let's deep dive as per usual on our environment. So the first thing as per usual, just logging into your QNAP. Um, you need to open the, the app center. On my case, I have already, uh, it was asking me around about update some applications. I'll click yes, update them, all of them. And then inside all apps into the search here on the top, you can just put Q objects and it will appear just over there. We click install. You can install it on, well, on the data, data volume that, um, uh, that you want. I think I will install it on data volume one on two was selected by default, so that's no problem. The application does not consume that much uh, space in disk. It will increase the CPU and RAM um, consumption of your QNAP because at the end you are enabling, enabling a new service. Um, so the QNAP needs to publish, uh, needs to publish or emulate or uh, publish a, a new technology. So just bear that in mind. Once again, for all QNAPs, um, you. The performance might, might struggle up just a bit depending on the, the use case and how often you're doing backups and so on. This QNAP that I have over here, right here in front of you, doing the test is really, really old, probably six, seven years, and it still works. Um, but just bear in mind at the street with the uh, uh, follow the beam uh, recommendations. Okay, I could say over here on this wizard, I will click on no, I don't need to for you to show me the quick start next time. And here we go. We have a quick dashboard um, with the storage space, packets, files, and so on. With some statistics. The first thing we need to do is add an user. And this will uh, look for the local users or Active Directory users that you have already on your QNAP. I will select the one called Vim. And then what this will allow you to do is just create different access keys and different secret keys uh, per user. You can have as many as you want. Uh, so that was quite powerful and, and fast. Probably is the fastest that I've seen in, in any other software. So you just one click and then 
there you go the access key and the uh, secret key right away so that is that is quite good the next thing is uh we need to create a storage space and that this is quite important you can e reuse something that is there but i would probably prefer to create a new uh storage space so you you don't have any problem and you might have uh, files on the other folders already so i'm just creating one remember the name that you are creating here which in my case is q objects and i'm assigning the user beam remember that uh, name because we will need it later on that uh, Q objects the storage space name we will need it later on um, so the next step we have that already we need to create a bucket and we need to create the buckets inside the uh, storage space so Q objects and I will not make my life difficult so I will select bucket name Q objects as well and I will keep it private okay so I have that and I have that that's good now the last thing is on the server settings, you can just copy uh, and paste this service point into, into Beam. Let's take a look into the user management and take one of the, uh, the keys. Can you see that the access key is a storage space colon and then uh, well some, some access key and so on? That is quite important. So I'll show you that now in a minute. Inside Beam, you select the name and as per usual, the service point, the region you deleted by default. But the credentials, they need to be, once again, not just the access key, it needs to be storage space. For my case, remember, Q objects in uppercase, and then colon the access key and the, the secret, of course, the one that you have. That's quite important. If you don't do that, it will not work. And then on bucket, you just point to the bucket that you want. Now to the folder that uh, you can create, of course, just call it, call it Beam or call it GFS or call it copy, whatever you want. You can limit the space, I'm limited to one terabyte. Uh, you cannot enable the immutability on this, uh, uh, at least on this version, so it does not have the object lock. And then finally, you can yeah, click finish and this will, this will allow you to create this object storage uh, repository on, in Veeam, which uh, yeah, is great, it's there. Just a few minutes, I don't know, we, we are already like four or five minutes in the video. Now, what I what you need to do, uh, if you have done this before, is you need to combine a local backup repository and extend it into this uh, capacity tier with a scaled backup repo. In this case, I'm just creating a new backup repository on-prem, local, from scratch. So you can see over there, completely from scratch. I'm just adding a new backup repo and I'm going to um, put some even a new job into this backup repo so you can see it from scratch from the beginning how this is done okay so i go here and then and then i extend i expand the um the repo uh, okay i'm going to create here a folder in um on this repository i don't know i will call it q objects as well but you can call it of course whatever you prefer i'm going to leave me to four task use per vm and i don't want to align the file data okay so i want faster backups um they may be a bit bigger but they will be faster anyway so i click okay click next next apply and okay so once again we have now our backup repository on-prem backup repository and we need to combine that into um, and extend it uh, to capacity tier. To do that, we need to create what is called a scale-out backup repositories. So once again, I will call an, I will create a scale-out backup repository, S3 compatible, or S3 compatible, napper case. I think I'll call it probably like on-prem QNAP. That, that's a good name um, for my S3, uh, for my scale-out backup repo. And a scale-out backup repo, it's a logical association of different backup repositories. Uh, it can be on-prem, multiple of them, and then you can extend it to one uh, capacity tier per scale-out backup repo. Um, so at the moment, it does not allow multiple of them. You can see my new repo that I created. I don't have any VM or anything just yet. And then I will extend it to this Beam Objects 001. I will copy the backups and I will move the backups, meaning meaning that I can have a copy on prem and I can have a copy as well in this QNAP uh, Q objects in S3. Okay, so 
now that this is creating over here, it shouldn't take that shouldn't take that long. Click finish. The next thing we need to do is finally create a backup job that it goes into this into this uh, new scale backup repo. You could use it, of course, always extend it with an actual uh, backup repository that you have VMs and backups already. But yeah, I wanted to show you from scratch from the beginning all of this. Um, so I'll pick this job and I think I can just keep my Grafana VM over here or something. It's kind of a small Linux VM. So that's probably a good example to, um, to, to show you this. Okay, copy, paste over here name. I'll take everything out. Uh, but the Grafana VM, that's good for me. And now on the backup repo, I need to point to the new scale out backup repository that I created. Okay, that's, that's good. And if I put here seven points, I will have these seven points. And of course, uh, GFS, so the seven points, they will be on-prem and on this QNAP. And all the GFS will be on the QNAP as well. Um, move into the QNAP. Okay, I click finish on here. I can run the job, and while while this job is running, let me tell you something about why this is interesting. If you want to use this, uh, I encourage you to use it uh, as long as you follow the the Beam KB and try to have the better hardware as possible in Beam, the better specs. Um, this is important because you can use later on this QNAP kind of like a black box. It does not have the immut immutability, but if you enable this S3 compatible and you secure and make everything really strict, you know, that only the Beam server can talk with the QNAP on that specific port and you disable SMB, you disable uh, SIF, you disable NFS, you disable uh, every single uh, port into the QNAP and you restrict the firewall really, really, uh, uh, really good. It can be a really good uh, strategy that you have just a QNAP box for these copies or for this even archive as long as that box is secure um, secure enough. It does not have the immutability as I, as I said. So if you are looking for immutability on S3, you might choose, you, you might need to look into another technologies or vendors, but anyways, this is good and it's an extra option. So the job has finished. If I go into my, try to see what this job is, if I go into copy path, or if I just go into the backup repository, I can see the uh, files over there. Uh, yeah, plain, plain files. Okay, so I can see the VBK, uh, 44 gigabytes. That's good. Uh, if I go into object storage, it is not here just yet because the copy into the into the S3 compatible is still happening. So if I go into running, I see that over here running the offload is one percent. So it's just moving the blocks um, into this uh, fantastic um, object storage compatible. If I go back into my QNAP, um, I should see something here on the dashboard. Maybe is it a refreshed over here? Refresh? No. Um, okay, let me change maybe the uh, the interval to the last hour. Hey, here you go. There you go. So you can see that they have been already um, some data transfer and some uh, some API calls and so on. That is Veeam doing all of the all of the magic uh, with uh, with the S3 compatible. So it's good to see. I think the interval is every five minutes. It, this might be refreshing or something. Um, so it does not give you that granular every second or something, but uh, every five minutes is probably a good aggregate. So yeah, I will accelerate this process. And once again, let me tell you that this QNAP Q objects, it might be a good idea. Uh, once again, as long as you protect that box um, as much as possible, keep it up to date, disable all the protocols that you're not using and making it the firewall really, really strict. I will say that that, it, that, is, not, um, that is not a bad idea and it's always something different from the backup repository. The backup repo can be Linux with immutability, which I will probably recommend. And then the kind of the copy into uh, of those backups, this can be this QNAP with S3. So they are different protocols and so on. Um, okay, now if I go into object storage, I can probably see the VM over here. If I go into properties, yeah, there you go with the icon and, and everything, you know, with the, with the cloud icon. So that's good. And if I go back into my QNAP, I can see now in the last uh, hour, I can see right now more 
more API calls, more data transfer, and so on and so forth. So I don't know, for being a free application inside a QNAP, uh, uh, it's really good. I don't know, it's absolutely great to have this uh, within a few clicks inside a hardware that I've been owning for seven, eight years already. So you can see the files on the file station. So if you explore and you try to be curious, you will see here the archive, and then you will see some Beam, and then you will see some metadata here, some more uh, storages and blocks and everything. Things that we will not understand because this is uh, tied to the, to, the, to the metadata. So that is everything. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hopefully this is useful for you. And if that's so, yes, uh, uh, do thumbs up and of course give, uh, put your comments and hopefully I will see you in another video soon. Thanks so much. Bye.